So uh, we are going to start on uh, ERPM medicine, uh, you know, the uh, VIVA, the long cases that is station one. So in station one, you will be given a long case. So these are called long, actually it's not, the real term is not a long case because the thing is it's a sort of a mini version of a long case. The reason is um, uh, because here you are only given a medical consultation. It's a medical consultation. What do you mean by a medical consultation? In a medical consultation, uh, you are taking the history in front of the two examiners. You are taking the history in front of the two examiners. So when you take the history in front of the two examiners, the examiner will be listening to you, whatever the questions you are asking from the patient. And they and we, like I have been an ERPM examiner for almost four or five years. Um, uh, so like in that, what we do is we uh, go through a checklist. So in that checklist, we ask when the student has asked this student has this one, when the student has asked this one. So if the student is asking all these points, we keep ticking them. So, uh, uh, I will be giving that long case marking scheme when we start the um, true course because in a class like this, I cannot share it for uh, privacy uh, obvious reasons um, and for legal reasons. Um, so what happened is, so you are taking the history and you are given a 10, you are given 10 minutes and in that 10 minutes, you have to take the history from the patient. Now, before you go like uh, in the morning or maybe in the afternoon even, so when you go there, as you go there, the uh, like you will be assigned a number and also you will be given some sheets so when you were given sheets that day i told you even uh, like uh, uh, at the introduction video uh, which i did to you all that you need to write down few things you need to write down few things in those papers what is that so you are not going to write uh, you know the uh, sentences in that sheet now uh, because we are doing practical classes two exam cases practical classes in my hospital so uh, students came in there and they did superbly well, uh, like they are sure to pass because that, that much of great performance they showed. Um, uh, not only really just pass, they are going to pass with very precision. They are, they are so good. Um, so like uh, they realize that there's no time for you to write down sentences. So don't please fail the exam by writing sentences. You don't have time. Guys, I'm doing some true exam long cases and going to show you how the time is the guys here taking long case history is not the problem the problem is is the timing because guys now i will show you my videos like those are teaching videos so because they are teaching videos i have taken a little more than 10 minutes like sometimes even going up to about 14 13 minutes why because i'm teaching you also while taking the history so it's more but when when i gave students to take the long cases it, so my students they witness I will share some photos also how students presented. Uh, and uh, and they, they were able to take the history in about seven minutes. And that was a very good comprehensive history. We are definitely possible, not only possible, like with a very good mark. So uh, like when you are taking in the exam, it's not difficult to take the history in seven minutes. It's not difficult. Because guys, now in my long cases, I'm trying to show you all the points, but you will not remember all the points. You will remember only, uh, you know, majority of most of the points, but not all. So therefore, in a period of about eight minutes, you can, or seven minutes, seven and a half minutes, maximum eight minutes, you can cover the long case. So long case in the sense, the medical consultation with the patient. So you must remember the bedside manners. Even when I started the short case uh, class, I told you that you always approach from the right side. And, uh, and also I told you before you reach the patient, you write down these important things in your sheets given to you. So what are the things you are going to write? Uh, this is some, now, this has become some, like bread and butter for you because I have taught you this. So first, the first sheet and the second sheet. So you are given two sheets. So in these two sheets, guys, anyone who is missing this class, we will be, don't worry, we are posting this in the YouTube. So like everyone can watch this. This is really beneficial because you know the true exam setting, the true exam conditions and the true exam markings and what they truly ask in the exam. Not just, just this hi-fi theory. We, they don't ask this, no time to ask this. When you see one of our videos, you will realize guys, no point just memorizing some theory here. No point collecting big bundles of notes. They don't ask. I'll stand on my head if they ask you like that, right? Right, okay. So here the introduction. 
So you write like this. When you are given the paper, you write introduction. I have done this once, but just as a, a revision, I'm telling this. So you write a brief, in, uh, like, uh, like you write these things, introduction. Introduction, what do you write? The name, age, occupation, and the residency, where she's coming from. Name, age, uh, occupation and where the patient is coming from. If it is a female patient, you can ask whether she's married, whether she's married and having kids. And just quickly ask the ages of the kids. Just quickly ask, because here you don't have time to, because sometimes when you ask from a woman about the kids, they might get emotional, like if, they, if she's having a sort of, sort of chronic disabled disease. So if this lady is having something like rheumatoid arthritis or maybe nephrotic syndrome or something like that, like a long-standing disease and she has been in the hospital for so many days, she might get so upset and she might start tearing. So you have to be tactful, like, I mean, so don't get carried away so very quickly. How many kids have you got? That's all, right? So that's from the female patient. Male patient, you should better not to ask that. You can wait until the social history and ask that part. Even the female patient, if you ask that point in the social history, it's perfectly all right. So introduction, those are the four components. The name of the patient, age of the patient, where patient is coming from, and the occupation. And if it's a female patient, ask whether she's married and having kids. Right. The next important one is, so you should not waste any time for that introduction part. Then the Presenting complaint, PC, presenting complaint. How do you ask this? What is the question? What is the open question? Guys, in medicine, we, are, we have two types of questions. Uh, not only medicine, even law or any other field, they have this. So there are open-ended questions, close-ended questions. Open-ended questions and close-ended questions. So here, for the presenting complaint, guys, we always advise students to ask open-ended questions. Open-ended questions. What do you mean by open-ended questions? You get the student, to come out, I'm sorry, you get the patient to come out with his story. Like you get the patient to talk a lot. You want to evaluate, you want to extract maximum information from the patient. You want to extract maximum information from the patient. So you ask open-ended questions. See, yeah, then Mona so first of all, you have to introduce yourself. You go from the right side, you gel your hands. I'll be showing you these things in the videos. Those are called bedside manners. And now here you don't have to ask for chaperone and all that because it's just, you're not examining the patient. You're just talking to the patient. So you really don't have to ask for chaperone. That's right. So uh, uh, you introduce yourself. I'm a final year medical student and I'm going to uh, talk to you and get some information. Mama Amasan Vasari, why the shishe? Mama Ata Khatakal, the Mr. Tikagana Yami. So we'll be giving uh, so many things in Tamil version. I had to give, like, in the short cases, I, am, I have started uh, printing the Tamil versions now. Uh, because the thing is, the, 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 the doctor who is supposed to do the Tamil translation, she's been quarantined because our hospital is badly hit by COVID-19. And today I'm like, a, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm like a very weak and, you know, like a very sick man, isn't it? Why is that? Because for one year, of corona history, I didn't have any day of fever, but two days, I mean, in high fever after the injection. Oh my gosh, it's so painful and you get very high fever. Uh, I think I took Panadol once and within three hours I had taken this, so I might get paracetamol toxicity by tomorrow morning. Uh, because I got to do the class, I took uh, like advanced paracetamol uh, the tablets also. So it's real fee. So that's what I'm saying. So that's uh, that HO house officer is quarantined. So whenever she returns back, I will uh, give you the Tamil versions, Tamil translations. Even for long cases, we'll be doing that for the benefit of students. Guys, now I want to give you a very important advice. Though I give you Tamil translation, guys, now these are very practical situations. We know students, those who have really, really struggled by trying to ask from Tamil language. My dear friends, just... Uh, so today, guys, I'm not going to teach you anything. I'm just trying to, you know, show you what we are going to, going to do in, the, in this class and how important this is and why this is the best class. You can close your eyes and say this is the best class. We will show you why it is. Because all the long cases, 26 long cases we are going to cover, cover in this, um, you know, uh, in this series, which is difficult, but we are going to do it. Um, 
and and also we are going this one to one uh, you know uh, presentation from students so you will be standing audio uh, presentation so when i put a song, so when i take a history from a patient you have to listen to that and you have to uh, listen carefully and you have to make a summary so you have to write down the summary and you have to forward it to me via whatsapp as an audio message so i will correct it and i will give you individual feedback for the exam purposes that's that will be really great you never get that guys because that is exam experience right exam is experience because i was a true exam so that's the reason right okay so uh, what is the important message i want to tell you guys short case you need to know some tabel commands tabel commands see a divadan eliyad na kadetang right or what this open eye select kila Kila something, so I can't remember. Nalla mucha diga like that. You can give commands. So those things you can learn the Tamil words, guys. But what I'm telling is, if you are given a long case, if you are given a long case, everyone please bear this thing in your mind. If you are given a long case and that patient cannot utter a single word in single his language, please ask for a translator, guys. The reason is, if you so you are trying to talk in Tamil, like I mean. If you if you can manage Tamil language, that's perfectly all right. Like I mean, if you know at least few words here and there, they know okay. But if you don't know Tamil, guys, listen. Believe me, some people are saying okay, you learn Tamil language and go for the exam uh, for the long case. No, guys, that is someone is doing a crime to my dear students. Don't do that. Why to learn a language in about say another three four weeks time? You are going to. Jeopardize you. You're going to. Uh, you're going to forget your long case practicals. Better you train yourself, guys. We are not passing any student for language. We are, we don't test your language. This is not a language competency exam. Trust me, guys, because I'm a true examiner. I'm telling this. This is not a language competency exam. You say, sir, I'm struggling with Tamil language. Please give me a translator. Tamil students, uh, if you struggle with the single language. Please ask for a translator. But usually, Tamil students are okay. Uh, Muslim students are the best because they can manage the single language, Tamil language, English language, all three very well. Uh, that's a very good thing that we should praise them. Um, but uh, usually, Tamil students they can manage it single most of the time. But single students only they have never bothered to learn a single word in Tamil. That's a shame. But anyway, I'm being a single. So I'm also ashamed. Uh, because I can't talk that much Tamil, but I can manage. I can give some commands in a short case, but uh, but long case I will never do that. Now in the channel practice, guys, let's put it in the true uh, practical situation. Now when we are channeling patients, we have Tamil patients, and if I try to ask the things in Tamil with my with my broken Tamil, right? So I am using what is called broken Tamil, right? And with that, patient may be telling something else which I don't understand at all. And you may be making a wrong diagnosis. That's unfair by that innocent Tamil patient. So don't do that. So please ask for a translator. That's so. So most of the time, what we do is, if there's a patient who is really uh, cannot converse in single language, we usually get a Tamil examiner. So that Tamil examiner will translate for the students, or we get down a translator, right? So please, please ask for a translator, guys. Just a quick thing. Uh, I just want to ask you because I don't know whether SLMC had made any new regulations, rules, regulations. Have they ever told that uh, you will not be provided a translator? Have you ever been told that you are not being, uh, you are not provided a translator? This will happen. This problem will happen only in Batiklo and Jaffna, uh, sometimes in Colombo also, but. Usually the patients can you know, manage with single language, but as far as I know, like I mean, even now, like even last year when we went to six seminars, we gave translators. If the student asks for translators, we give them because long case guys, medical consultation, you have to ask so many things. The patient will not understand whatever the patient says. You will not understand. So don't bother memorizing these long cases in Tamil language or Tamil students like I mean, uh, maybe singular language. Ask for a translator, right? Because you are going to fall into trouble. I know one student. Like actually, that was a good student. Actually, <coughs> uh, I remember that. Uh, like uh, one student, she is very good. I, I know she passed all six subjects in one go in ERPM exam theory. All six she cleared in one go. She came for the medicine case, 
and uh, she was a Tamil student, and that was a single patient. So myself and the other co-executive, we were singleies. She should have asked, "Sir, I'm struggling with my single language. Please help me." And then we would have translated for her. But she never asked for translators. She tried to, you know, ask few things. She did not ask actually. She was stammering. These are true things. What's happening in the exam? Mind you, as an examiner, we know because some people might tell something which <laughs> which never happens in the exam. So students just blindly follow those things, and they ultimately fail in the exam. So this is not what's happening. The truth is, like, uh, uh, like the truth is, you have to get the proper story from a translator. Okay. So don't try to struggle with your language. Uh, I mean, by by the other language and fall into trouble. Okay. It's important message. Right. So. The next thing is presenting complaint. So, how do you give the open-ended question? The open-ended question that you need to give is, what is the main complaint which brought you to the hospital? Oyama me para spiritual ita gina apu pradhana amaru mukad. Oyama me para spiritual ita apu pradhana amaru mukad. So, the, if you are using a translator, Tamil students, you ask like this. Uh, you tell the uh, translator, so translator will be able to uh, speak in Tamil and singular or English and Singular, whatever. So, so you tell like. Uh, uh, so I don't have to teach Tamil students how to ask in Tamil. Right? <laughs> That's a joke. Right? So I will tell in English. So what is the main complaint? What is the chief complaint which brought you to the hospital? So that's uh, this is an open-ended question. You are recognizing the presenting complaint. Then the immediate next question is See, for example, the patient is saying. Doctor, mata unah di lama mahavi, mata unah gatta, unah ya unah di lama. Kecil kali aku dengar, doktor mata satu ya kurang tiba. The duration, duration is one week of fever. Then guys, you need to ask characteristics of fever. So uh, I'll be teaching these things in the new course, guys. How to take because if you or or fever of unknown origin is a separate long case which we will be discussing. So then you will be asking what are the, uh, like what are the characteristics of fever? Is it high fever or is it intermittent fever is it continuous fever or it is is it intermittent fever or, or did you also get high fever spikes what the third one so that means spiking intermittently did you get very high fever spikes was it the intermittent fever hemadam unadim badana na kadi kadi duna ave hemadam unadim badana na kadi kadi duna ave so learn these words that they ask except is waiting for these words then ekadi gata unadim ba then you was oyata unagatta velawi sitala karala bewulu ada sitala karala bewulala gehila gehila unagatta you ask if for chills and rigors that you need to ask then you ask what are the relieving factors and aggravating factors mono kanu kudu ne inne doctor mata himana matakane mono kanu kudu ba hinne doctor panrol dekan kanu kudu ba hinno konda i was just telling how to evaluate so this is how you evaluate the presenting complaint so present so presenting complaint this is how you got to evaluate like you have to ask the uh, what recognize open ended question to recognize what is the presenting complaint is then ask for the duration then ask for the associated symptoms severity of the illness where the and severity and progression that i have given in the head out severity and progression how did it start so i'll give you an example for progression dyspnea dyspnea you ask okay so patient says six months of dyspnea then you ask okay six months before how many steps you were able to climb and now how many steps you can climb can you walk on the flat ground were you able to uh, sleep without any pillows six months before now how many pillows you are using in order to avoid shortness of breath doctor i am using about three four pillows now so can you show that can you see that progression of the disease so that's how you will look for progression and severity of the disease you have to ask that right then associated symptoms Uh, that is uh, the precipitating factors and the relieving factors. So this year, what makes you this year worse? What makes you this year get better? So patient might say, Doctor Mutra, very poor. I have to do nothing. Hati I do it now. Or when I keep myself propped up, my this year is better. No, uh, this year is getting better. So things like that. You must ask relieving factors and also precipitating factors. All right. Then guys, so now you have evaluated what is called the presenting complaint. That is not enough. You are asked, when are you going to have a marathi ending? what tells what other problems have you got so now we are asking for the other presenting complaints other or we call them subsidiary complaints then right? subsidiary complaints or other presenting complaints when you know that maru at the end so patient might say doctor mata papu ek ekoma hut enawa arimbara 
kochchara kala kitha goda copy so same pattern what is the problem how long you had that problem always stick to this pattern guys you don't fall in trouble and the exam is love it this is the way you got to ask questions not any other way i am telling you the examiner's preferred method by most of the examiners so i have been an examiner peradini i have been an examiner ragam uh, kalambo nhsl so all these places this is the way they ask uh, you have to get the history right so present incomplete duration and then you have to ask the progression of the present incomplete or even other present incomplete and then the associated factors precipitating factors and relieving factors right now you have asked for the present incomplete guys we have asked for the present incomplete so we'll put number 1 there and you write like this so be and you evaluate it so now you don't have time to write sentences and mind you guys now um, immediately once you uh, listen to the case you remember all the facts because immediately after that you are going to present this case you don't have to write down even but if you want to jot down few important so short the subject maybe six months like that you jot down important points so learn to draw these sketch diagrams that is more than enough if they are not going to watch this what you have asked they we never when you go we put the we dump the papers in a dustbin and we discard them we just dump in a dustbin right we we like if even if you have written very well because some people uh, tell the no no you must write all these things in the paper they look at no guys never for four years i have been an exam they we never even bother to look at that it's is against our exam rules it's against exam rules we are not supposed to look at your paper we are only supposed to listen to you and give you marks so shortness of breath duration then after that guys you need to ask Uh, so the things that i told you uh, duration and the progression so progression and then the precipitating relieving so you put your own short short forms you know this you are p dagan presenting it progression again pr dagan relieving it precip sorry precipitating factors are pr e dagan relieving factors are rel dagan so you know now what you ask right then guys the associated symptoms associated what are the associated symptoms in fever like chills and rigors like chills and rigors associated symptoms with dyspnea what are the associated symptoms edema chest pain cough why when you get uh, shortness of breath guys when you get dyspnea you can get bronchospasms and you can end up with cough and wheezy so those are called associated symptoms of the present incomplete see how beautiful that is guys when you have a structure rather than in certain places like uh, like i mean you need to know this pattern of long case taking pattern of long case taking right the next one is guys other complaints so now other other present incomplete number 2 so maybe reduce your output okay then you have to evaluate that so you put a circle and again go according to same pattern duration progression precipitating relieving factors and the associations see you stick to a pattern uniform pattern so that is how you evaluate the subsidiary complaints then the next is guys you have to uh, so ek ek ahanne kohomada mokada open ended question ek what is the open ended question mena gono wada amaru dine what are the other problems you have got what are the other problems you have got Right. and the next thing is guys you have to ask um, uh, the history of present incomplete in that what we do is systemic review so in the history of present incomplete we do a systematic review and also we analyze the diagnosis we do a, that's called etiological analysis etiological analysis say for example patient is coming with dyspnea guys how many so guys today i'm giving you like you will be in heaven after this class so like when you get a patient with dyspnea guys there are so many cases of dyspnea we don't know what it is so we know the common cause of dyspnea is heart failure congestive cardiac failure then also the dyspnea can be due to respiratory diseases like interstitial lung diseases what are they fibrosing alveolitis it can be a case of copd causing shortness of breath or bronchial asthma causing shortness of breath or this could be a case of anemia why when you get symptomatic anemia you get what is called exertional dyspnea exceptional dyspnea then also you get uh, dyspnea due to renal causes renal causes what are the renal causes balanna bi kuchcha lassan de kiyala mehemai ganu exam de balanna me kana sbc ekek neme meka post graduate ekek neme yawanna puluwa ekek 
right? Such a such a brilliant character. So right from the beginning, guys, we have put our foot in. Hari the in in singular, there is a saying called I don't know how to run, like I mean always beginning is the most important thing. In singular, they say mula mula tama, right? Beginning is the most important thing. So right at the beginning, you have to give an impression to the extent. You know, I am a confident man. I know what to do. I know my area. I know my subject. Give that confidence. Then I'm buying me. This Nia, short. He got shortness of breath for six months. I book the theory part. I'm going to. Then matter can I? I'm going to do my hand do it. I'm going to make lecture notes. I'm going to do hand do it. I'm going to do it. They are asking so many. Like you are trying to ask so many things. Irrelevant. Why studied so much of theory? No point, guys. Theory you have passed, guys. You have passed brilliantly, and that's why you are coming for this clinical forum, right? Good. So the next is uh, uh, you have to do the systematic review in order to get the etiological analysis. So I told you the next one is renal causes. That is uh, reduce you. So what will you ask? What mutra normal with the animal? Then the mutra and pramani are doing that. The animal, mutra animal are doing that. Mutra can do what? Pen pen the animal. Right, what are mood associated? Nibilati ena man. What are you asking, guys? You are asking for renal causes of uh, edema and shortness of breath, because you know when you get CRF, when you get nephrotic syndrome, nephrotic syndrome, in all that you can be short of breath. Right. So you ask whether you got any periorbital puffiness. Did you have a normal urine output? Whether you had any frothy urine? Frothy urine. Mutra kanu kona pena pena magi ena man dumba. Sabab pena magi pena pena magi ena man. So how nice when you ask like that, guys. The examiner will be so happy. He will be off the planet when you ask like that, right? Okay. So that is we are doing the systematic review. See how many systems we covered. We asked for renal causes. So renal system we covered. We ask. We are going to ask the respiratory. Why this dia can be due to respiratory causes, bronchial asthma, interstitial lung disease, and also uh, COPD. So you ask for cough. Did you have a chronic cough? उदेपाइए You know this is a case of respiratory cause, not a heart failure cause. But mind you, sometimes heart failure cases also with the really bad. We give them, uh, you know, uh, uh, inhalers also. But you know, primary at your level, you have to take it as respiratory cause. Mm. Right. Okay. So, uh, so that's how you do the systematic review. Then you ask for the renal system. Then also, guys, you have to ask for anemic symptoms. Why anemia causes exertional dyspnea? Anemia causes shortness of breath on exertion. So how will you ask that in the history? Why a bedak karanu kotha? Mahansiyala bedak karanu kotha. Engada panna neti gatiye, durubal gatiye, khambeli gatiye vagi tiye na madhe. Nidharam polve madhe. Khanda bari khamatiye na madhe. So what are you asking? You ask for anemic symptoms. Do you have any fatigue? Do you have any loss of appetite, headache, and also have you got any exertional dyspnea? Whether your dyspnea is getting worse or exertion, minimum exertion. Put that weight down. That nigga, yeah, no. Put the weight down. That's why the hati is not there. The muscles are not there. Why are the yakka de pithi di la di? See, guys, we are in the track. Why are the yakka de pithi di la di? Were you given uh, 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 iron pills? Were you given any blood transfusions at any stage? See, you are covering everything, guys. Right? You are covering everything. Like a computer memory, you are asking all these things. Right. So that is, guys. You are doing a systematic review plus etiology analysis. We are doing etiological analysis. We want to find what is the cause of dyspnea is. That's it. Now this is the difficult part. This is the part where all the students struggle. But we make it so simple for you. The difficult one, difficult one, because I give you for all cases I give you sample presentations, sample presentations, and not only sample presentations, even the discussion questions we cover in your long case program. So, guys, next page. What have you got to write there? What have, I think that make you cover our grand department systems. Hurry though. 
you look a fool if you try to do that why you have limited time you have limited time pata 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 you have to ask questions for that you have to train your brain guys okay so i get this these are the questions i am going to ask this is the longest these are the questions i am going to ask laliya kiyala diye din bewahan right i am mange wahano right so that's it right so we give you those packages like how i gave in short cases right then guys the next page next page what very simple next page is very simple so guys this history of presenting complaint and the systematic review the first page you must finish it about like a brilliant student should be able to finish it in about say 6 minutes i would say or 6 to 7 minutes yeah put it as 6 and a half minutes yeah to be on the safe side 6 and a half minutes so you have not another about 1 and a half minutes left now now like a parrot pata 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 gala itun tika hage reno monade you ask for the other things what are they ask what are the other illnesses you have got vena monode wat tina asadeepa oya vena monode asadeepa walata the behet ganne oya clinic yanawada vena asadeepa ekata clinic yanawada that's a very good question to ask guys vena asadeepa ekata clinic then now we vena asadeepa monode gela doctor mage kakula ridena mage niya putta ridena i got a pain in my nail i got a pain in my lip i got a pain in my buttock i got a pain in my oh terrible Right, so don't uh, like. Uh, <laughs> so that is not the situation where you have to ask that many open-ended questions. Pass medical history. Hurry, Aaj. What is it? When I want to ask any more, I clinic can get done. The clinic will tell us how much. Then the doctor will have to take mass spatha bed gun. When I want to ask letter, the end of it. Have you got a disease where you are being treated by a doctor uh, with monthly follow-up or two monthly follow-up? Are you being regularly followed up in the clinic? Very important question. Are you been regularly followed up in a clinic? Uh, uh, so past medical history go through diabetes. What did you get diabetes? Our do kia. What is the next question? Have you got diabetes? For how many years did you get diabetes? Or how many months did you get diabetes? Are you been regularly followed up in a clinic? Are you been regularly followed up in a clinic? Right. Then what are the drugs that you are taking now? Are you on drugs like metformin? Are you on any other pills? Do you know the names of them? What have the doctors told you? Did they say that your control is good? Are you on insulin? Do you know the name of insulin? You know the name of insulin. then you have to ask quickly for like diabetic case it's a long case guys separate long case as well but this is here diabetes become part of another disease so here the main complaint is like heart failure you are going to well with shortness of breath but diabetes is only part of that diabetes is only past medical history but still you need to go through these questions checklist questions for diabetes this is one of the most important long case we are going to do a practical on that and we are going to get student to present uh, the summary summary of that as well that's what we are going to do one to one right i hope into internet won't uh, play up um right so uh for how long you have got diabetes and have you got any so you are going to ask now for individual microvascular and macrovascular complications how are you going to ask that so you ask have you got any reduced vision did the doctor say that diabetes has affected your eyes did the doctor say that diabetes has affected your eyes Did, have you got any peripheral neuropathy? Kakul dekho yagi hiri bati lada. Kakul itu ala ti yena wada. That's the question you got to ask. Kakul dekho hiri bati lada. Kakul velo itu ala ti yena wada. Then you need to ask for nephropathy. Have you got any protein urea? Have you noticed any protein urea? Have you ever noticed uh, any frothy urine? Mutra karo kote pena pena magi yena wada. Sabam pena magi yena wada. Toilet tiki hunga ariya. दूसरे महत्व के लिए तीनों द वाकी मूत्रात्य का प्रोटीन पहले नमाइ किया था। Then you got to quickly go through the macrovascular complication, which is also other uh, past medical history. So you ask for ischemic heart disease. Have you got any chest pain? Have you got any angina? वो आठ कावड़ धारी पापु में दे तादा कर ला कैक्कु में भी ला ये कैक्कु मो यागे हाकट धारी माँग आते दिखे हरी दुआ लती है ना वो हाकट धारी माँग आते दिखे हरी दुआ लती है ना ये वाले दाढ़ी दाल ल Right. Have you got any central tightening chest pain with relation to the mouth or the jaw, and also down the left arm? 
and at that moment did you get any autonomic symptoms what are the autonomic symptoms sweating and vomiting are you on any pills like aspirin are you on any pills like aspirin do you take that tablet to be taken under the tongue very frequently ano oya den gara divada thiyena pettema nithara nithara thiya ganna vela thiyenawada what does that mean he is getting frequent episodes of angina divada thiyena petta nithara nithara thiya ganna vela frequent episodes of angina so you got to ask that as well right that's in diabetes then you have to ask for hypertension what a pressure thiyenawada now guys don't try to be like a very theoretical big headed person why some students come and ask what a adhika rudira peena ne thiyenawada what shit is that right adhika rudira peena thiyenawada who understands that no one understands pressure thiyenawada why people speak singlish what a pressure thiyenawada pressure amaru thiyenawada pressure ekata behen gannawada that's what people talk adhika rudira peena maybe only you are talking to what is nosy so pressure thiyenawa ekata behet gannawa dosara mahathuru age pressure palne hodai kiyuwada then the baku onu dekan damage kiyuwada did they say that your kidneys are damaged why you do hypertensive nephropathy target organ damage target organ damage Then, guys, you ask for hyperlipidemia, cholesterol level very low again. So you initially ask for papu yamaru, you ask for injury, so you are not going to repeat that again. Then ask for strokes. Have you got any strokes? What answer? What are you going to tell me? Petta panna neti vela. How about that? Neti vela? Tiyena vandi. B D cell. How about that? Petta panna neti vela. Agi petta. Agi petta. One side of your body has it been paralyzed? Have you ever had any episodes where one side of the body has been paralyzed? A stroke. Which are macrovascular complications of diabetes, right? Beautiful. So that's how you have to cover the past medical history. So, guys, next is past surgical history. You must quickly run through this checklist. Past. So, for these guys, you have to buy hard these questions. You have to be familiar. That's why I'm giving you some presentations, right? You have to be familiar. So, uh, past surgical history. You have to ask: um, Have you undergone any surgeries? just very just for the sake of asking you ask that then do you have any allergies for any drugs or any uh, food items allergies now say for example guys if a patient is getting frequent blood transfusions like a patient uh, we did the first long case of that uh, a patient coming with hemolytic anemia and that patient guys getting frequent blood transfusions so they can get reactions so how will you ask that what lay there got a ega palu dala kasala thiyenawada gahila gahila una rang gena thiyenawada what are you asking for you are asking for a transfusion related reaction transfusion related reaction lay kak dena got a palu dala kasanawada gahila gahila una rang gena thiyenawada right next is you have to ask for family history wage paramparave kaatawath heart amaru e behadila thiyenawada paramparave kaatawath diyawediya behadila thiyenawada nanna hrudaya baada behadila thiyenawada kaatawath heart so hrudaya baada that is you know heart attacks has anyone got any diabetes so you quickly ask for the family history then guys comes the important uh, social history and the habits social history and habits so in social history guys this case of course not that important but still it's important like if she is employed like whether she whether the dyspnea affects her employment due to dyspnea whether she has lost her job whether due to dyspnea whether she has lost her income guys that may not be important to you but that is the most important thing for the patient and the examiner will also respect that because when you ask that uh, the examiner loves that so ask the patient Uh, have you so are you still working uh, are there days that you have been absent to work have you lost uh, you know earning capacity or sali bayi me hakiya wadu wela thiyena sali hamma karanna bari wela thiyena wada
Right. I'm also getting chills and I goes. You go watch that. Guys, did you all get the COVID vaccine? No, not, not yet. You all, still you all are not given. Oh, it's terrible. You get high fever, chills and dry goes, severe myalgia, arthralgia, nausea, can't eat. Oh my God. And that day I had to do this class. <laughs> it's, it's, um, you know, it happened like that, but it's okay. Right. Okay. So uh, those things you have to ask in the family history. And family history, one more thing, whether you have lost your job and also whether you have lost your earning capacity. Another thing that you got to ask is whether you are dependent on activities of daily living, ADL. Are you dependent on ADLs, activities of daily living? What are you talking here? Activities of daily living. What are they? As you wake up in the morning, you do uh, what is called dressing, then you do toileting, then you do washing, then uh, dressing, grooming, right? Uh, recreational activities like watching television, things like that. So there are lots of activities that we do. And we do those all those activities all alone. We don't need any support for that. But when the patient needs support in order to carry out those functions. So that you have to ask whether the illness, whether the current illness has affected your activities of daily living. What a Myanmar had the chinisa, what a gather a vada. Actually, it's very easy to ask from single uh what a me asani pay had the chinisa, what a gather a vada mono than karaganda very well at the end. Bonavagi gather a vada the karaganda very what a me uh toilet take a gila thani vada karaganda very the what a me uh karmari uh sorry. So there may be some patients also are almost crippled due to the severe shortness of breath. There are, there are patients those who are crippled. So that uh, you have to ask those things in the history. Okay. So that, that those things are important in the social history. Then also, guys, social history also contains habits. The alcoholic history. So the duration of alcohol consumption and also whether he has any features of alcohol dependency syndrome. Alcohol dependency syndrome, that means whether he has got any withdrawal features, any withdrawal features. Okay. Whether he has got any withdrawal features, whether he has got any seizures, fits, whether he has got any hallucinations. Very quickly asked, you don't have to go through the entire checklist. No time to do that. No time to do that. Just to show the guys, this is just a, you know another uh, teledrama. So in that teledrama, like you know, uh, teledrama with several episodes, right? So in that teledrama, you become the best actor, and you play the ball that he is delivering. Right. Okay. Right. Good. So those are things that you have to ask in the social history. Good. Excellent. And also, guys, if it is female patient. Ask for reproductive history, particularly in the cases of SLE. Please ask for uh, young stroke. Uh, if a female patient is a young stroke patient, you have to ask that in the history, uh, like whether she has got any recurrent miscarriages, why antiphospholipid syndrome, antiphospholipid syndrome. So don't uh, forget to ask about recurrent miscarriages, recurrent miscarriages. In the female patient. Right, good. So these are the things, guys, that you have to ask in the second sheet. So that's why before you reach the patient, you quickly write down these things. But make sure that the exam is what you're writing. He will think that you wrote something, you know, uh, secretly. So like as you walk towards the patient or just before, as you were given the papers, like first they think, okay, we'll send this one to that one. Hold. Hi, but shall, shall we send this one today? Yeah, this one? Okay, ready, no? Right. So that takes some time. For the examiners to organize things at that time, you can put a checklist. Okay, guys, please do this. Your seniors, those who did like this, they pass one shot with a brilliant pass, merit passes. Our students, they did it and they are doing it, they will do it. Right, beautiful. So, guys, in my classes, what I'm going to teach you is like I'm going to train you how to take this type of very comprehensive long cases within that 10 minutes. Now, sometimes the timing may be a little difficult, like sometimes you might go on till about 10 minutes or 11 minutes, but you need to ask the questions, uh, you know, quickly and try to make it short and simple, uh, like short and sweet. Right. Okay, so uh, that's how you 
do the medical consultation guys after that so in the balance one and a half minutes or to two minutes what i'm going to do you have to keep that one and a half minutes to two minutes the most precious one i say the most precious one you have to organize your thoughts and see how to present the summary how to present the summary make it my most important thing. hey we, do, we usually don't get the student to present the history we usually don't get the student to present the history but what we want is the summary oh yes what are the salient points or what is the diagnosis? Sorry. Really not well, sorry. So when they ask for diagnosis, don't straight away come out with the diagnosis. Please don't give your diagnosis. You say, sir, I would like to present my uh, history or I would like to present my summary. So if they ask for the diagnosis, please wait. Don't, uh, don't tell the exhibitor, please wait. You say, sir, I would like to present the sum summary of this patient. And they will never say, no, 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 you can't do that. You present the diagnosis, they will never do that. So you start with summary because, guys, it may be a very difficult case. And your summary may be utter, like it may be a completely wrong thing. So uh, there's no time to show your knowledge to the exhibit. Because even if your summary is bad, still if your discussion part is good, like if you the, the history part is good, you're taking it very well, you can still pass. Okay, right. So this is the format, guys. So of our classes, the series of classes, what we are going to do, we are going to teach you how to take long cases. We are going to give the salient points. We are going to give very nice comprehensive handouts for that. And also, guys, for individual cases, we'll be doing sample presentations. Most of them, because there's quite a lot, 26. Uh, I was a loser when I advertised 26. You can do 26 in five classes. Uh, so I will have to definitely put at least one or two classes more. Uh, so 10,000 worth thing I'm doing 5,000, but that's a different story. It's okay. Right, guys. Now, the next thing is, so um, you learn to present these long cases. And also the, the next thing is, I train you how to deal with the discussion, how to tackle the discussion very effectively, how to tackle the discussion part very effectively. So guys, I know all the questions that they ask in the discussion. So easy. You have got a, you have got an asset. Why? A true examiner. So I'll be telling you what my colleagues have been asking and what I have been asking right? in the true exam. So uh, we will train you how to deal with the discussion part. Because there's one more component. So once you present the summary, he asks, okay, can you please give me your differential diagnosis? Next is, give me your differential diagnosis. So you've got to give your differential diagnosis. Then after that, after giving the differential diagnosis, then he asks, uh, uh, if you were given this patient to examine, if you were given this patient to examine, what physical signs would you expect in him? What physical signs would you expect in him? So you get an arbitrary case, like you think, okay, this man has got heart failure. So you remember all the features of heart failure. So he may be having this, he may be having that, he may be having that. He, that's, those are the things that you are going to look for in this man. So what are the things? Say, for example, shortness of breath is. You are going to see when the patient is dysneak. Dysneak at rest. Or when the patient is orthopnic, whether he's using pillows and they are also when he's dysneak. Then uh, you have to see uh, whether this patient has got any um, edema. So you have to see whether the patient is dysneak, um, uh, like uh, with the patient got only ankle edema, with also patient got any abdominal edema, like ascites, with the patient got any periorbital edema, by renal impairment, you will get periorbital edema. Then also see when the patient got ankle edema, ankle edema, right? And then also there may be generalized edema. Patient may be cyanose, why heart failure patients, their breathing uh, capacity is low due to bronchospasm. So they might end up with uh, heart failure and they might have cyanosis. So you say they might have. We don't know no, because we are not given a chance to examine the patient. Then in, the, in my cardiovascular system examination, I will carefully look for the position of apex bead. I will expect the apex bead to be laterally displaced. I will expect the apex bead to be laterally displaced. Okay, and also I will carefully look for any murmurs, like I will particularly look for any uh, mitral regurgitation murmur, uh, suggestive of mitral, yeah, mitral regurgitation pan-systolic murmur. 
right? And also, I will look for the diastolic murmur of pulmonary regurgitation, which can happen in pulmonary hypertension. Then I will check the blood pressure of this patient, why the patient has got severe heart failure, his blood pressure may be low. And that is the reason why patient is on uh, like uh, maybe anatomes. Right. So this is how guys, we teach you how to evaluate this patient. Like what are the points in examination you would expect? This part guys, most of the students, they struggle, right? They struggle, they almost get diarrhea when we ask this simple question right so but you don't do it like that you are in a very good driving weekend right driving seat then guys next is how do you investigate this patient then the next question is they ask how do you like to investigate this patient so you have to say, tell your investigation profile and then finally they ask how do you like to manage this patient how do you like to manage this patient and then you give your management pathway for that particular case so if you have time, they might ask a bit of theory. Like say, they might ask what are the types of heart failure? So you know, there's diastolic dysfunction, there is systolic dysfunction. We also call it heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, right? We will look for any valvular uh, deformities, valvular uh, defects. Right, so that's the way we uh, present those cases, right? Okay, now guys, I'm going to show you a sample video, what we have been doing. So almost every case we have videos and uh, like uh, I have recorded them uh, and the true videos and true patients, not this, you know, hide and seek games, not some, not a student, not a ERPM student present in the case. These are true exam cases. And then you will realize how difficult it is, how much time consuming. That is the reality guys. Reality is not a ERPM student present in the case, right? Reality is uh, a true patient being examined, right? So your long cases is highly practical, guys, okay? That I won't say, and but I cover theory also. Sufficient theory to pass with a superb merit pass, I will give you, because there's an exam, I know what they ask, right? Watch this. I hope it won't lag. I was really scared of this video lagging and all those things. I don't want that to happen. Right. And also guys, we are going to do something new this time. That is, uh, you get the opportunity to, to present two long cases to me, individual one-to-one -one basis. So what you do is you listen to the case and then uh, you send your uh, recording, you record it in the uh, WhatsApp group, your summary and also investigation plan and the management plan and forward it to me. Then then they are make mistakes, guys, no problem at all. Make mistakes and learn. I will give you an individual feedback, right? Send a WhatsApp message. You can send the WhatsApp messages to uh, our group or you can send it personally to me, whatever, right? Let's see this one. So diabetic patient, uh, what are the common long cases you can get with diabetes? You can get a patient with diabetes with a UTI, very common, diabetic with pyelonephritis. Then you can get a diabetic patient coming with cellulitis, right? Diabetic patient coming with cellulitis or skin abscess or something like that. Then you can get a patient with diabetes who is coming with very poorly controlled glycemic control. So diabetic patient coming with poor glycemic control, like patient will be, would have been referred by a GP or would have been admitted from the clinic because his blood sugar levels have been very high. So like, you know, the two common emergencies like either diabetic ketoacidosis or hypoglycemic hypospolar state. I'm giving you the, the, the possible long cases that you can get under diabetes, the possible long cases that you can get under diabetes, right? Not all, but some of the important ones. Or the diabetic patient might present to the hospital with fainting episode or syncope, that is like a hypoglycemic unit. They uh, would have been with a, with a, with a hypoglycemic episode. So, uh, like diabetic patient can come with fainting or with a seizure. So that's a hypoglycemic episode. 
to this another long piece that you can give you see. Then uh, you will get a patient who is coming with chest pain and shortness of breath. So that is the patient who has been complicated by ischemic heart disease. So these are the possible long cases that could come along with diabetes. But one of the commonest is diabetes coming with UTI, pyelonic right. So let's see. Let's talk to this patient and do a nice long case. Right. Mama, I was not sure why this is she. Mama, we are again. Mister, we have done a job. He must have been here. I was not sure why this is she. He has done a job. Hi. Then, how can I move on? Then, Niloka, Puspa. Niloka, why is he here? Hatalis Pahai. Hatalis Pahai. Padichi, who is it? Halugamu. 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 Badala, Lama Hindu. Lama Hindu. Lama Hindu. Ekena, ya Uruda. Sekadu ekina. Ah, awal ni sekadu ekido. Lama ni dekido. Nae ekina. Ekina ini. Itu kalau arah sawa kerana apa? Nae. Hari kau dah. Then diluka kian deh. Di paru ispida dah buat pada nama ru pok muka dekila. Jadi pada kekumah dekila wamanegiya. Jadi pada kekumah dekila wamanegiya. Jadi pada kekumah koi hari dah bulu. Di pete di pete di pete. Di pete di pete. Dah kulu pete. Dah kulu pete. Jadi pada kekumah dekila wamanegiya. Eccha rai di udi. Udah gati ya kak. Udah gati ya kak. Udah gati mulu. Dawas kia tu, mungkin ni pada kek kuma itu udah gati ya. Dawas hatera. Dawas hatera tu mulu. Tadi pada kek kuma kau dah kumpul pete. Itu kau ni dah kumpul pete pada kek kuma kita turun dia kek kuma kita. Turun dia kek kuma kita. Tu orang yang sihir lekar la, sihir lekar la, biul lekar la, biul lekar la, gaya lekar la, biul lekar la. Tadi udah. Oh, tadi udah. Tu dek. Orang badi biru kau juga kek kuma kau. Tu dek. Itu kau tu buka tu. Cukup di mana hari kaya pun, baru di. Baru puru dah lepas, baru dah lepas. Kaya macam kapu kau, baru puru dah, baru di tengah. Kaya macam kaya. Gas itu bagi tempur rahat, ini macam urut ni. Ini macam ini, hebe baru puru dah, baru di tengah. Ini macam ini mana parti lagi? Insyaallah ni kang, dia ni kang kahapari. Kahapari, pita bagi dia. Dia ni baru yang aku tu ni kang lega dia aku tu. Lega? Lega. 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 Ini macam ini gila gila, ini pasti lega ni. Itu kotak dari itu belari waris cia. Di itu kotak orang itu dari mutra kan orang itu devil lah. Serius serius mutra barah itu negatif. Ini mati mulu tu ni dalam satu hari. Ini mana gode kalti mana? Gode kalti mana? Mutra devil lah tu mana? Oh devil lah ni mana mutra ayat di thani kira sudu part pinna gode. Pinna gode kan? Ini kocer kalai tu tu mana? एक नंबर बुढ़ाक का है। बुढ़ाक का जी। ये पीने यार बट आप तो ये तो बोले कि दूसरा माह तू बैलू आ देगा। माँ, तीनों में क्यों है ना यार? हाँ, तो देख। यार तो कोई भी ना कर दूसरा करा तो भी भी दवा साथ रहती इससे ला। दूसरा करा देवी ला पिक्चर ना होगा कि। देवी ला कावे ना मे� Ini tu kalau buta kan, na baru kan, na perih mana? Serin serin buta baru. Serin serin buta baru. Toilet tu kan, anak orang buta ni tak pita mana ni? Muda. Ini tu kotak. Orang tu mana mana tu dia nasi ni? Si. Si dia baru dia. Orang tu kian kian si dia baru. Orang tu pahat kita. Orang tu pahat si dia baru dia. Ini kalau ni kalau tidur tu ni bihun jangan macam ni. Mama Islam, mata hemat saya mati bahaya villai. Badi gini ya nama. Ini kerana mama badi kita hendak, kita mesti bahaya itu. Enggak ketutu na? Oh, gada ketutu. Mutra itu baru ganas beri ulo. Ini mama bela orang tu pahai dek. Oh, itu pasi mama. Kami doktor game beri gan arah ganas buat ayak itu sih ni balan ni kelai. Balan buat itu tuh sih ganas itu tipu. Itu pasi ya kami klinik kita terlihu. Oh. Eh, dia la klinik gihing gihing ni nak buat apa? Ekda asa kiri tu tak kah jalan bonde anak buat apa? Naha inga, apa mihinggi ye ne? Hari, hari. Itu kau tu ini bulat itu dia beri apa tu bulu tu duduk beh, peti tu duduk. Oh. Bulat itu duduk peti. Peti. Arab itu pun bikin dulu kita tu kan dol peti tu kita rasa ini, kocer tu kita duduk dulu. Udah itu dekai rasa itu dekai. Oh. Jadi tu kerana. Udah itu. Ini peti mana tapi tu rasa tawat peti duduk. Duduk na, duduk na. Sudu tu. Sudu bawa dek. Dai. Kaya mana pera ganti. Oh. Itu kau tu dah ingat, oh ini peti kocer kah lepas tu dia beri apa peti. Aur itu hatta rakti. Aur itu hatta rakti. Di beri apa peti kat? Itu kau tu klinik. Kita dah dia ni kami ni, tu sebab orang tu kita mukut dua ke pahli mukut dua ke orang ni dah tu dah pun dia orang tu pahli mukut mati kira. Mana mati? Mana mati kira tu? Tu kau tu peti beli pahli kerana dah ni kira itu kira. Eh kira kuru ni agali. Kuru ni agali. Amaru lagi ada pas. Eh mukut amaru lagi kuru ni agali tu. Kand, waktu kau dapat mih mukur yang dia ni. Ah, 
is Niluka, 45 year old patient from Kulia Pitya who presented to us with right eye. So this is what we are going to do. Good evening, sir. Miss Niluka, 45 year old patient from Kulia Pitya who presented to us with right iliac fossa pain associated with fevers, chills and dry galls and vomiting for four days duration. She also gives an episode of dysuria and increased frequency of micturition. She is also a diagnosed patient with diabetes with a history of diabetes for five years and also having micro microvascular complications such as uh, nephropathy associated with frothy urine. However, she has not taken eye referrals for checking for retinopathy. She complains of numbness and tingling sensation of her lower limb, also some associated wounds. She also has a history of intermittent claudication which relieves on rest. And one year ago, she has had an episode of recurrent vomiting which she underwent endoscopy and CT scans. She has no family history of diabetes. But I so she stressed that point. She has uh, got recurrent vomiting. It's extremely important. Why we are suspecting diabetic gastroparesis, which is another autonomic neuropathy you can get in diabetics. Diabetic gastroparesis. So well done. Very good. I would also like to consider that she has significant social factors such as her husband also being a diagnosed diabetes patient and also poor follow-up in clinic. I would like to conclude my findings as she has developed diabetic gastroparesis as my differential diagnosis for this case. Thank you. Yeah. Now, uh, she did quite well. I mean, definitely we will pass uh, that particular student the way she presented. Now, guys, uh, always life is not like that. You get difficult cases. So, guys, now, uh, now, actually, that was one of the brilliant students. So, like, I mean, still you are being trained. So, like, in this stage, even before we start, of our long case class, she came with, she came out with that uh, summary. It was fantastic. She covered all the specs of microvascular complications of diabetes. But guys, still, I wouldn't give her the full marks or a, or a high distinction point. Why is that? She failed to address the acute problem. So, so, so what's the acute problem? Acute problem was like uh, the patient has got fever, dysuria, frequency, things like that. So that means she's coming with not with the gastroparesis because gastroparesis had been having for some time, for years. She has been evaluated for that. But the presenting complaint is something like a UTI. She got a UTI. Why she got this high fever? Because diabetic gastroparesis, you don't get fever. So you have to get. So this is the feedback that I'm going to give you. So I give you points like, I mean, very good, like, I mean, I mean definitely possible. We still pass you very well. But uh, since uh, you are a student who should go for a distinction, uh, so like, uh, that's why I'm correcting you. So don't get disheartened. You have done extremely well. So uh, like the acute problem is, and that's why you're coming for classes, right? So the acute problem is fever. And also she complains of dysuria frequency. So that means she has got UTI. So uh, it's an infection complicating diabetes that's the primary problem infection complicating diabetes that's the primary problem so remember that. so that uh, should be the uh, most important uh, thing in the summary so summary she told beautifully she had this all the past and but also if she has told about fever and vomiting and you know dysuria then i will give her full marks right still i will give her a pass mark but uh, may not be enough for her Merit, right? So th that's why you are coming for these classes, my dear students, because so she straight away got a merit. Uh, sorry, a, a definite pass. So that's a huge uh, thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's how many stars? <laughs> Three gold stars, right? Okay, fine. Um, so that's the way we are going to do some of the cases. So we will give you individual feedback for you to learn. So that's something new that we are going to experiment this time, and I hope all of you all will benefit from that. Right. So let's see the summary and then I will show you my summary. Look at that. So I don't say that I am perfect. I also have made mistakes. I'm, I'm, I'm a normal human being. Uh, but so therefore I also can make mistakes. So, so you can understand 
that when you take a diabetic history, there's quite a lot of theory to ask. It's huge and quite lengthy. Diabetic history is not easy and I covered almost every aspect of a diabetic patient's history which you need to ask. So like it's a uniform pattern. So I gave you several long cases related to diabetes. You have to uh, train yourself to this pattern. Once you train to this pattern, the rest of the questions will be very easy. So now I will press the summer. So Niluka, 45 years old lady from uh, Kuliapedia, presented to us with right eyelid facet pain associated with fever, chills, and rigors, and also vomiting for four days duration. Uh, and also she complains of dysuria and also frequency. This happened on a background history of diabetes for the last five years, uh, which is probably complicated by microvascular complications such as nephropathy because she complains of proteinuria. Uh, she has not been evaluated for retinopathy and uh, she complains of uh, neuropathy as well because she has got numbness uh, in the both legs below uh, the joints. But she denied any non-healing ulcers. She also gives a history which is suggestive of intermittent claudication which could happen uh, related to diabetes. If she cannot walk uh, for too long, she gets leg like, pains and when she rests, the pain is really. There could be a possibility of intermittent claudication. And also, uh, she also gives a history, one year history, or one year before, a history where she had recurrent vomiting, uh, which has been thoroughly investigated with endoscopy and also CT scans. Uh, where I would like to consider whether there was a possibility of diabetic gastroparesis or whether there could be other structural lesions in these organs which could cause basal regurgitation and recurrent vomiting. Uh, she does not have a family history of diabetes, but now she has a social problem uh, because you know, her husband who is uh, basal, he also has got diabetes. And she is on insulin and with regard to her diabetes, uh, and she is not uh, properly followed up with her clinic. Uh, she is taking outside treatment, and so and also her diabetic complications has not been evaluated. If I was given this patient to accept it, what physical signs will I expect? Now, guys, I need a nice presentation, nice summary for you. That's how you have to present, guys. Diabetes. It's not just one or two or two, three, four sentences. Don't get caught for wrong things that, that you have been taught. Like, I mean, you need to have a comprehensive diabetic summary. It's very important that you give all this information that I covered. So cover the macrovascular, microvascular complications, then about treatment, treatment failures, whether he's been followed up, all that you need to cover. But very quickly, pata, 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 pata. And then after that, uh, uh, the examiner will ask, if you are given this case to uh, examine, what physical signs would you expect in him? What physical signs would you expect in him? So like in my uh, course, this long case discussion course, I will ask you all also, so like we can, uh, like you guys can participate, like uh, you can, uh, you know, uh, send your responses through uh, chat box and tell uh, the possible questions that you're going to ask. Okay. So that's going to be our uh, ERPM uh, long case. Okay. So that is when they ask what physical signs would you expect if you were given this patient to be examined. This is how you have to tackle them. Very quickly you must do that. You must train yourself. Okay. So what the one patient will be first Patient will be warm to touch. Uh, and because I'm suspecting pyelonephritis in my patient, so uh, before going to uh, examination findings, I will give my problem list. So problem list number one is the possibility of right-sided pyelonephritis. Number two, uh, diabetic nephropathy, diabetic retinopathy possibility, and also diabetic neuropathy. Then also with the uh, possibility of diabetic gastroparesis with regard to a previous history of recurrent vomiting. And also, I would like to consider the possibility of intermittent claudication. She also has a social problem, which also I would like to uh, 
So, coming back to examination, so uh, like considering the pyloric therapy, she will be warm to touch, she will be looking patient, and uh, in uh, examination, like general examination as well as systemic examination, you will notice in this patient, in this particular case of uh, diabetes, not all patients with diabetes, in this particular case of diabetes. Then, uh, with regard to uh, diabetes, if the patient has got a diabetic nephrotic syndrome, I will expect puffy, uh, peri periorbital puffiness, like a lady. And also, I will look carefully her feet when she has got any neuropathy ulcer. And also, when she has got any inter, uh, the, the space between the toes, if she has got any infections like TDI infections. Uh, by general examination and in cardiovascular system examination I would like to look for the blood pressure because the lab patient I would like to make the blood pressure below 130 over 80 and also see some suspected pyelonephritis in my patient so uh, she can go into septi septicemia or septic shock so then she will get very low blood pressures. Uh, diabetic patients also can get uh, heart failure, diastolic dysfunction, and therefore I will see that she has got any nervous. In my respiratory system exhibition, I will look for any bimasal palpitations, which can happen if she has got any uh, CKD or diabetic related heart failure. Then, in abdominal examination, I will see whether she has got right sided palatable kidney, which is finally affected the actively hydrodephrosis or enlargement of the kidney. I will look for that. And in the nervous system exhibition, I will look for neuropathy. And also, I will examine the optic fundus whether she has got diabetic background retinopathy. Um, how will I investigate this patient? So, uh, for investigations, uh, first I will address the acute problem. Acute problem. The components in, in the discussion is first you are asked to present the summary, or sometimes you will be asked to present the problem list. So either summary or problem list. So I will also make a problem list uh, in our new course, and I will let you know. I will brief into that. Then also, guys. So um, summary and also problem list. The next thing is, if you were given this patient to examine, what physical signs would you expect? So you think all the physical signs will be there in this patient and then present like that. And then guys, they ask, how do you like to investigate this patient? So now before you start investigations, you have to bear in mind, uh, yeah, bear in mind what type of case, what type of yeah, uh, complications or what type of case you are dealing with, right? And that based on that only, you organize your investigation. Say for example, uh, a patient with diabetic gastroparesis, the investigations are different to a patient with diabetic nephrotic syndrome. And that is different to a patient with diabetic, uh, diabetes with stroke. Did you follow what I'm telling, guys? Did you understand, guys, what I'm telling? Yeah? So diabetes with individual complications has to be assessed separately. right side of pyelonephritis, so I will do a urine full report and a urine culture. I will also do a full blood count, look for neutrophil leukocytosis. In my UFR, I will look for pus cells and also red cells and also I will see whether she has got nitrites and also uh, leukocyte, uh, le uh, le nitrites that is possible with UFR. The urine culture, I will see the urine culture, but I would wait until the urine culture report comes prior to that I will start the antibiotic. Then with the full blood count, I will look for due to the leukocytosis. I will also do inflammatory markers like CRP to see that it's high, which I will expect this lady to be high with pyelonephritis. I will also do serum creatinine as a baseline test because pyelonephritis can cause acute kidney injury. And also I will do the electrolytes. Uh, and also, as microbiological investigations, I will also do a blood culture, uh, which you, uh, if there is septicemia, that will be very useful. Then with regard to a diabetes, I will do HbA1c to see the, uh, what uh, glycemic control is, or if facilities are not available, I will actually do capillary blood sugar feed uh, and uh, optimize insulin regime. Uh, uh, since she is taking mixed heart insulin and if her glycemic control is satisfactory, I will continue on that, but 
ఇఫ్షియస్ కొట్టు కొట్టు లైట్తో కొట్టు బీసీ బోర్డు స్ట్రెచ్ ఆల్సో ఎస్ బేసిల్ ద రూట్ um then you will continue with the basal bowl stretching or whatever the regime that he has been using but if the regime is not satisfactory then you will have to start on basal bowl stretching that is you give basal insulin plus soluble insulin three times a day before each meal okay right and the liver profile like is tld the diabetes they can get dash and also i would, would like to do a lipid profile uh, in this diabetic patients we have their setting uh, they need to have their cholesterol uh, under control so i will do those investigations with regard to management uh, of this patient first i will address the acute problem pyelonephritis so after taking urine culture blood culture i will start this patient on broad spectrum iv antibiotic like iv ketraxone Uh, one to a lovely uh, then also uh, i will hydrate her properly and make sure that she's hydration is normal otherwise she's patient can go into diabetic ketoacidosis also i will be take good glycemic control so preferably with the basal bolus regime so that is i will maintain sure and also soluble in sure three times a day as bolus in sure Uh, and i will monitor her urine output and also i will monitor her uh, white cell count and crt to look for the response of my treatment and also i will maintain a good fever chart then with regard to her diabetic control i will also do a uh, dietitian reference to see whether her diet is okay and also i will get the nurses to check her insulin technique So, and also in this patient there are some treatment failures i will refer this patient later on to i surgeon to look for evidence of diabetic retinopathy and she complains of nephropathy she complains of fat urine so i will do a urine uh, albuminuria and ratio and pcr to see whether she has got significant nephropathy if that is the case i will also order ultrasound scan of the kidneys and also she was completely of intermittent claudication so uh, after checking her peripheral pulses if they are weak i will do a uh, uh, ankle brachial pressure index and also i will do a arterial doppler scan of both lower limbs to see whether she has got any uh, significant vascular occlusion uh, and also i will do a monofilament testing of her feet to look for any evidence of neuropathy thank you quite a lot quite a lot and we sort of very comprehensively cover the diabetic long case that's what we need to do so guys the long case of particular say cases like diabetes will be analyzing you individually so every student like i mean will be assessing you individual and we'll be giving these cases so i don't think anywhere you can get this stuff right so this is going to be our course and um, so every class we are going to cover about five or six long cases uh and uh, we'll be giving the handouts of that and this is the pattern we are going to do it okay any suggestions anything for improvement you like it yeah i think definitely you will like it because it's a new version where we made it very practical like we go to student and student is in the hospital you feel the you are in the hospital and you are truly taking the history so that's a new innovation guys we are experimenting we are always experimenting new things and new ways of learning uh, and new ways of teaching right so thank you very much uh, uh, like for participation i was so sick guys please wish me a speedy recovery i'm really really bad uh I'm really high fever i don't know i don't have a thermometer maybe about 105 or 106 It's terrible uh i took two panadols four panadols but it's not working guys right anyway but i managed to give my stuff to you uh, and i hope students will benefit tell your friends the friends those who are not happy with what they are getting already just for the rel just tell them this is the way macham we teach this is the way macham we we have been taught i think this is there's something guys let's let's go to a class and see right okay all right so all the best because our aim is just for uh, students to pass the exam that's it right passing the exam winning the exam is our only goal no other goals in the 
classes. All right. So hoping to start this long case series on Wednesday, Wednesday evening. Uh, and this is the pattern we are going to do. All right. And uh, like whenever like uh, the COVID restrictions are not there, you can always come to my hospital, the teaching hospital fully appear. There we have plenty of cases. The guys, those who came there, they know what a beautiful long cases we did there. So like they have covered whole, like about 90% of long cases they cover. So, so like you are, you are also most welcome to come for those classes. Okay, all the best uh, and see you on Wednesday. Thank you.